Rapid-acting insulin is the fastest-acting form of insulin used to rapidly reduce blood sugar levels. In this mnemonic video, we'll cover the important facts about rapid-acting insulin so you'll be ready come test day. In this mnemonic, we're coming back from rescuing a man off a cold mountain peak. The man was cold and hungry, but now that he's been rescued, he's recovering nicely, especially since I've wrapped him up in some insulation to keep warm. Here at Pixarize, we use insulation to symbolize insulin, because insulation and insulin sound so similar, right? Here we have a diagram of a cell being supplied by a blood vessel, with glucose circulating in the blood. Insulin is a hormone that binds to receptors on cells of our body. The insulin binding activates a chain reaction that tells the cell to put glucose transporters on its cell membrane. This presence of glucose transporters then allows glucose to enter the cell from the bloodstream, causing a decrease in blood glucose levels. Insulin is made naturally in the pancreas, but people with certain conditions like diabetes mellitus may need extra doses of insulin given through an injection. In these cases, insulin is considered a drug or a medication. When given as a medication, insulin comes in four different types, divided based on how fast they act in the body. We have rapid-acting, short-acting, intermediate-acting, and long-acting insulin. In this video, we are going to specifically focus on rapid-acting insulin. Notice how I'm a member of a rapid response team. With this super-fast helicopter and highly trained crew, we are able to rapidly respond to emergencies like rescuing this guy from the peak and getting him the insulation that he needs to stay warm. Use the idea of rapid response to help you remember that in this scene, we are talking specifically about rapid acting insulin. Rapid response for rapid acting, okay? Rapid acting insulin is the fastest insulin type available, meaning they lower blood glucose levels quickly. Let's talk more about the exact timing of rapid acting insulin next. In our rapid response helicopter, it only takes one hour to reach the peak of the mountain. The helicopter is much faster than if you were to reach the peak by hiking or off-roading. The way the rapid response helicopter only takes one hour to reach the peak should help you remember that rapid acting insulin peaks around one hour. Let's break down what this actually means. Each type of insulin has an onset, meaning when the insulin's effect starts, a peak, meaning when the insulin level is the highest in the blood, and its effect is most powerful, and a duration, meaning how long the insulin's effect lasts. To illustrate this, take a look at this chart, where the y-axis represents insulin levels in the blood, and the x-axis represents time after the administration of insulin. Rapid-acting insulin has an onset of 15 minutes, peaks around one hour, and has a duration of between three to five hours, depending on the specific patient. Remember that insulin lowers blood glucose levels, so when insulin is at its peak is when glucose levels are most likely to be the lowest. For this reason, the peak is the most important of the three to remember. In other words, it's at the peak time that the patient is most likely to experience low blood glucose levels called hypoglycemia. Rapid-acting insulin peaks right around one hour after administration. Different resources may slightly vary on this number, and the exact timing of the peak will vary by patient. But on test day, if you see a question asking about when rapid-acting insulin peaks or when you should be extra careful about monitoring for hypoglycemia, choose the answer closest to one hour after the administration time and you'll be sure to get that question correct. Next, we're going to talk about the specific drug names of rapid-acting insulin. For your convenience, we've clustered these drug names around the construction worker at the bottom of the scene. Okay, now that we've successfully rescued the man from the peak and warmed him up, let's land the helicopter. But wait, the helicopter landing pad is still under construction. See all those piles of fresh asphalt? I should have known the asphalt wouldn't be ready yet. After all, construction always takes way longer than expected. This asphalt should help you remember aspart. Asphalt for aspart, got that? In clinical practice, you will commonly hear aspart called by its brand name, Novolog. But since the generic name Aspart is the name that will be tested on the NCLEX, just remember this asphalt for Aspart and you'll be good to go. The construction crew obviously needs more workers since they've fallen behind schedule. The construction manager is advertising the job posting now as he glues a listing nearby, hoping that people who know how to pave asphalt will apply. The way the manager is gluing a listing should help you remember the drug name Glulicine. Glulisting for Glulicine. Glulicine's trade name is Apidra, 
But again, the generic name glulacine will appear on the NCLEX, so just remember the glulacine glue listing, and you'll be sure to remember that glulacine is a rapid-acting insulin. The construction manager needs to up the construction speed of the helicopter pad, so he's decided to get more organized using his new List Pro app to help him keep track of his to-do list and keep his construction crew on task. List Pro should help you remember the drug name Lispro. Lispro's brand name is Humalog, so you might hear this in the clinical setting as well. But for the NCLEX, just remember this List Pro for Lispro and you'll be set. It might be a while before we can find somewhere else to land, so in the meantime, I better give this guy some food, seeing that he's starving from being lost on the mountain peak. This person eating food should help you remember that rapid-acting insulin is to be given with meals. Specifically, the patient will want to be sure to eat within 15 minutes of rapid-acting insulin administration. Let me explain why it's so important to take rapid-acting insulin at the same time as meals. This is a diagram of the stomach, intestines, and a blood vessel. The food we eat travels through the stomach and the intestines, where it gets broken down into glucose sugar molecules. The glucose is then absorbed into the blood, which raises blood glucose levels. To visualize this process, take a look at this graph, with blood glucose levels on the y-axis and time in hours on the x-axis. Notice how after a meal, blood glucose levels start to rise until they peak, typically around one hour after eating. Now, let's bring back our graph from earlier showing insulin levels in the blood over time, after the administration of rapid-acting insulin. Remember that rapid-acting insulin peaks one hour after administration. By administering rapid-acting insulin at the same time as meals, the timings of the insulin peak and the blood glucose spike will synchronize and keep the blood glucose levels within normal limits. If a patient eats a meal without administering rapid-acting insulin, the blood glucose levels will skyrocket. And on the other hand, if they administer rapid-acting insulin without eating a meal, their blood glucose levels will drop drastically. So, the timing of taking rapid-acting insulin and eating meals is super important to keep blood glucose levels within normal limits. Alright, that's all for this mnemonic, let's recap. Rapid-acting insulin is the fastest-acting insulin type that peaks around one hour after administration. It includes the drugs Aspart, Glulacine, and Lispro. And rapid-acting insulin should be taken with meals to prevent post-meal blood sugar spikes. And now we're actually done with rapid acting insulin. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. I'll see you next time.